When you think of educational games, you probably think of something like this. As opposed to something like this. <laughs> this is Cosmology of Kyoto, a point-and-click adventure game where you explore the ancient Japanese capital of Heiankyo which today is known as Kyoto. You encounter various historical figures, visit famous sites, learn how the different castes of people and society lived, and run into ghosts and demons who will kill you in horrific ways if you aren't prepared. It's a game that mixes historical fact with folkloric horror in a way that I've never seen done outside of books and movies. So get your encyclopedias ready, along with your Buddhist sutra to ward off the malicious spirits, and let's dive into Cosmology of Kyoto. Cosmology of Kyoto was developed by SoftEdge and published by Yano Electric for PC and Mac in Japan in 1993. It was released in English for Macs in 94 and got an English PC release the following year. Riding the wave of the all-encompassing mist and coming out on one of those newfangled CD-ROMs, Cosmology of Kyoto seemed poised to be one of those games that found their way into nearly everyone's home as a curious oddity. You know, one of those jewel cases you'd pull out of the weird rack on the side of the computer desk at a friend or relative's house and be like, huh, what the hell's this? But sadly, this wasn't to be, as the game sold poorly. But it did garner a fair amount of critical acclaim. Even famed movie critic and notorious video game hater Roger Ebert named it as one of only two games he had ever played and enjoyed, the other being Myst. Before we go any further, I want to give a special thanks to these dungeon connoisseurs and dungeon architects who support me on Patreon. If you'd like to watch videos early, and possibly get your name in upcoming videos, click the Patreon link down in the description to find out how. Now, you can find Mac, Windows 3.x, and Windows 95 versions of Cosmology of Kyoto through sites like My Abandoned Wear and the like, but good luck getting them to run on modern systems. Luckily, there's a site by the name of The Collection Chamber that has you covered. Here you can find a Windows 3.x version of the game that's configured to run in DOSBox. The owner of the site has already done all the heavy lifting to get this to work, so all you need to do is download the game, run the installer in the zip file, and voila, it just works. It just works. The Collection Chamber is an amazing site, by the way, with a depository of hundreds of old abandoned games, and the person who runs it has reconfigured all of them to run in DOSBox on modern systems. So go check it out and consider donating to them, because they're doing God's work over there. So once you hop into the game, you're immediately greeted with the main menu. Choose new game and you're thrust into character creation. Yes, this game has a character creator. Select married or single, male or female, and as far as I could tell, these have no bearing on anything. Then type in your name. Don't mind that you won't be able to see what you're typing. This is an unfortunate side effect of DOSBox emulation with this game. Oh, but be sure to remember what you type. Your name is also your password when loading a saved game. Next you can choose what your character will look like, but don't get too excited. It's not that advanced and everything ends up pretty much looking like a me reject in the end. After that we get a text scroll that goes by entirely too fast, but it gives you the historical context for the game and also lays out some of the more supernatural and occult themes that are present. In 797, the Emperor of Japan moved the capital to Kyoto after a series of bloody civil wars, and the intro paints the Emperor's reasoning for the move as motivated by a curse put on him and his court by the prince who died in the old capital, so the Emperor wants to escape the vengeful spirits created by so much bloodshed. The city of Kyoto is fortified with occult defenses, and thanks to this, the culture of the city blooms. Now it is the 900s, 10th century Japan. Kyoto is a prosperous city on the surface, but underneath there are political power struggles, sickness in the streets, and a series of fires and other misfortunes. The ending of the intro text puts it better than I ever could. Out of the darkness, out of bounds, demons and goblins appear. It is a time when the darkness is truly black, when the light which shines reaches far into the soul. The space that is Kyoto works like a mirror that projects the depths of the human mind, and it is about to become the mirror of your mind. As I mentioned earlier, Cosmology of Kyoto mixes the factual and the folkloric, 
basically recreating the mindset of a person living in 10th century Japan. It was a superstitious time. Many people believed in the existence of ghosts and demons. As far as they knew, those scary cautionary tales that we consider fiction nowadays were true. And so, as you explore the city, you'll come face to face with ghosts and demons, catch glimpses of things out of the corner of your eye, or something popping out from behind a building for just a moment. And you'll think maybe you imagined it, but more likely, it was actually there. You start in a field near the main gates of the city, with nothing in front of you but a mirror. Picking it up and checking it will reveal that you are naked. That's no way to walk around a city. So find the corpse to the south and steal its clothes and the pouch of coins it has on it. Oh yeah, even though this game is fully translated into English with an official Western release, the directions at the top of the screen were left in kanji, Japanese characters. So you'll probably need a little primer on what they mean. This symbol, Kita, is north. Minami is south, Higashi is east, and Nishi is west. Commit these characters to memory because as you go deeper into the city, it'll be helpful to know which direction you're facing to move around and find your way to specific locations by using your map. Now that we've got some clothes and money, we can head into the city, which is to the north. But there's a demon to the east that we can play whack-a-mole with, who will drop a signboard that's actually an amulet and this will come in handy in just a second. Moving north through the bushes brings us to the main gate. However, if we try to enter, a voice tells us to go back. Turning east, we find a samurai, who we can have a chat with. The voice acting in the game is completely in Japanese, with English subtitles, and the acting is top-notch throughout the entire thing. It really grounds you in this foreign world, and I'm just glad they didn't attempt to dub the voices into English. 1990 standards of voice acting would have made this a laughable experience. Listen, fucker! Mind your own business! This is my business, shit for brains! I don't like your attitude! There's not a whole lot of music throughout, and what little there is is foreboding and atmospheric. The perfect creepy backdrop to the dark streets of ancient Kyoto. There are a lot of strange and unnerving sound effects too. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself though. The samurai at the gate notices our amulet board and says it belongs to him. If you return it, he'll be grateful and tell us his name is Watanabe no Tsuna. The amulet was stolen from him by Tsukumogami, the demon of passing time. And that must have been the little fellow we played whack-a-mole with. As we continue our conversation, he'll ask you if you feel something weird. This will have a typing prompt pop up on screen, introducing us to another mechanic for interacting with people. Again, because of the emulation, we can't see what we're typing, but luckily most of the time when this pops up, you'll just have to type yes or no. But there are a couple times where you'll need to type something specific. Anyway, typing yes will have Watanabe turn around in time to see a demon about to attack him. <laughs> He'll wound the demon, and to thank you for warning him, he'll give you his sword, the beard cutter. Pretty good prize for just answering a question. If you say no, the demon will appear, but Watanabe won't give you the sword afterwards. Whatever you choose, now that the demon at the gate has been driven off, you can enter through the main gate. Or you can turn west and follow a white fox through a hole in the outer wall. You can even skip the encounter with Watanabe entirely by choosing this path. Either way, you'll end up inside the city. By now, I'm sure you've noticed the strange presentation this game has. As was pretty common for early computer games, much of the screen real estate is taken up by UI elements, and the actual gameplay is relegated to a small portion of the screen. The unique thing about Cosmology of Kyoto is that it allows your view of the world to be presented in widescreen. Well, not true widescreen, especially back in 95 if you were playing on a CRT monitor. But the image itself is wide, and this view lends the game a unique look. The illustrations are all gorgeous, with a muted color palette and deep shadows, giving it a dark and creepy edge. The sky in the background and the empty, eerie streets really give this game a forlorn and foreboding feel. The character designs really add a lot of personality to the game combined with the limited, uncanny animations. And yeah, while most of the animations only consist of a few frames, they move smoothly whenever there is animation on screen, and it looks great. I've already mentioned the directions in the top middle, and clicking on them will open up a map that displays your location, which will be incredibly useful once we start moving around the city. You've also got your settings on the top right, which only consist of a volume meter and voice subtitles toggle. 
The top left has a reference button, and this is pretty impressive. If you feel like you're in over your head with all the historical information or strange horror events that happen in this game, you can click the reference button to get a rundown of what just happened to you. Every place you visit, person you talk to, or strange event you see is inspired by some real life event or story. So you'll be able to get context for everything happening in the game. And the reference menu updates as you experience different things. Then you've got a list of categories in the bottom left which allow you to look through everything included in the game. It's like having an encyclopedia of ancient Kyoto and Japanese history and folklore at your fingertips. This is where the educational aspects of the game surface in their most clear-cut form. But going back to the main screen, we still have the bottom portion to check out. On the left hand side is a little square, and clicking on it brings up some lines above the box. This is your karma meter, and it raises and lowers depending on your actions during certain events. Having different levels of karma affects other mechanics in the game, which I'll get to later. Next we have the middle boxes. The top one displays text and also shows item illustrations. The bottom is your inventory where you'll see the names of things you're currently carrying, and clicking on them will bring up an image of the item in the top box. On the right side is another square, like your karma meter on the left, but this one represents how many coins you currently have. There are ways to find or earn more money, and again, I'll talk about this more later on. Once inside the city, the game world is completely open for you to explore. Cosmology of Kyoto places a lot of emphasis on free exploration and making your own choices for different events. You don't have to see all the events or collect all the items available in the game to finish it. In fact, you only really need two items to complete the game, and one of them isn't even Watanabe's sword. Though, having the sword will make things much easier. And if you're thinking that this is just a breezy, educational adventure with no risk, well, you're wrong. There are encounters that will kill you, but there is no game over. You'll be sent to hell, and will have to endure some tortures before you're resurrected, as a new person, brought back to the world of the living in the same spot where you died. You can even loot your previous corpse for your clothes, items, and the money you were carrying. But your karma level is reset after each resurrection. Certain events are reset after death as well, and some events are dictated by your karma level. So you may want to redo some things to raise your karma again. Karma also dictates which version of hell you're sent to. So you may find yourself in Jigoku, being tortured by various demons, or Ashura, getting beat up by the gods. If your karma is too low, you might not even be resurrected as a human even. You can also be resurrected as a dog. I tried to get this to work during my playthroughs and couldn't. So I'm not exactly sure what needs to be done to trigger this, but I've read that it's a thing that can happen. So there's no way to game over, but you can get stuck not having the right items or not knowing exactly where to go or what to do. Anyway, I'm not going to go over all of the events you can run into. There are close to a hundred throughout the game, and like I said, you don't need to see all of them to finish. But I will talk about some of the more interesting ones that I ran across, as well as the major ones that you need to complete to progress, and the ending. I feel like most people aren't going to seek this game out, and instead would rather just watch a video about it. But if you're one of the ones who'd rather play it for yourself, then just know that there are spoilers from this point on for pretty much the rest of the video. If you're thinking about playing it, it really is best to bumble around on your own and try to figure things out. And you can always come back to watch this video after you've tried it. With that out of the way, let's get exploring. <laughs> Despite the dark mood hanging over the game, there's a lot of people out and about on the streets of Kyoto. An old woman praying to a Jizo statue, a group of beggars and vagrants, thieves, merchants, noblemen. The game does a good job at showing the disparity between the common folk and the wealthy elite. This is most well illustrated in an event where you find a group of peasant kids playing a game called Gicho, which is sort of like an early version of croquet. One of the kids whacks the ball and it ends up hitting the guard of a nobleman's carriage. The nobleman pays no mind to the peasant child, but the angered guard wants to dole out a punishment. If you interfere, you'll wind up dead. 
and if you don't, the child will be cut down, beheaded right in the streets. Then the nobleman and his group just continue on as if nothing happened. The child's decapitated body will be left in the streets for the rest of the playthrough for you to run across whenever you return to this part of the city also. Yeah, pretty gruesome. You also run across some, how should I put this, propositions from a few characters who will then lead you to an abandoned home and then, well, the... But these encounters always end in a ghost or demon showing up and killing your lady companion, which is such a shame. She was just a good girl. Yep, she was a good girl. Mama's apple pie. The 4th of July. She was a hooker! While wandering around the opening district, you'll run into a group of beggars. If you give some coins to one of the old men, he'll tell you about Nichijo, the priest. And a couple of streets over, you'll run into him, and he'll invite you back to his shrine. There, you can watch a ritual being performed, and Nichijo will ask if you want to become a practitioner of esoteric Buddhism. Say yes, and you'll get to practice the ritual yourself. It doesn't matter if you perform it correctly, but when you leave, Nichijo will give you a sutra scroll for your protection. This is one of the two items needed to complete the game. Armed with the sutra and the sword, you have all you need to protect yourself while wandering the streets of Kyoto. You might run across some bandits, and they can be cut down, but the timing is really weird and will probably require some practice. Your sword can also thwart some of the demons, but most of the time you'll need the sutra to exercise them. There are a few more events in the opening district, like an encounter with a group of demons who are trying to make a person out of a corpse, a procession of ghosts who don't let you pass, and a strange shrine with chanting coming from inside. You can't enter, but when you try to pass, it will teleport you a few spaces back. This also makes me want to talk about the eerie atmosphere in the game that isn't really related to the supernatural stuff. Your map shows several streets and pathways that you just won't be able to access. Some are blocked physically, or metaphysically? I don't know. Like, by this strange force at the shrine, or by the entourage of ghosts. But sometimes there are just darkened streets that you don't have the option to walk down. It gives everything a really foreboding and creepy feeling. Like, what's down those darkened streets that the game doesn't want me to see? Yeah! Anyway, get your sutra and head to the market district. There are various shops here where you can spend your money. You can also borrow money from the supposedly kind-hearted Madam Moneylender, but you need to give up something of yours in exchange. On my first playthrough, I gave up the sutra, because I didn't want to give up the sword. Little did I know, the sutra was way more useful. You don't really need to get any more money, or buy anything at any of these merchants. There's a lot of useless stuff on sale, and adventure game logic might lead you to believe that some of it might be important later on, but none of it is. As far as I can tell, there are no events where you need to use any of these items that you can buy. The weapon seller near the market to entrance sells a bow. And this is the other item that we need to complete the game. But there's an event a little later on that will net us a free bow for the cost of some negative karma. But hey, at least we don't need to waste our money buying one. There's a monk preaching to a group in one corner of the market who will teach you a Buddhist chant that will raise your karma. And there's also a cockfighting ring where you can bet on fights and win some money, but I've only ever lost trying to bet on these. The main event of the marketplace are these two men who have captured a girl accused of stealing. Help her out by scaring off the men with your sword, and she'll guide you through the exit of the market area and into the second opened area of the city. You'll follow her to a place called Kawara Noin, the abandoned villa of an old nobleman. She'll go up to the house and invite you inside, where the two of you can find shelter from the darkened streets. But just as you're about to enter, the girl is pulled inside by a demon. Entering with your sword drawn, you'll find her corpse strung up inside. There's nothing left to do here, but you should re-enter and say yes to the ghost who appears and speaks with you. This will allow you to enter the grounds again for another event later on. If you don't do this, you won't be allowed to re-enter. Now you can freely explore the second area of the city. This section is much bigger than the first, with many more events, and also more dangers, like groups of roaming demons, thieves, and other strange happenings that can leave you dead and on a trip through hell for reincarnation if you don't choose the right action. Again, many of these events have historical or folkloric backgrounds, so be sure to consult the reference whenever you witness something that leaves you scratching your head, which will probably be often. At one point, you'll run into Watanabe again. The demon from the front gate will reappear, but 
Watanabe will break his sword trying to attack it. Let him borrow the beard cutter, and he'll vanquish the demon once and for all. He'll also return the sword to you afterwards. Down the street beyond him, you'll encounter a floating skull, which leads to Tsuchigumo, a spider demon. Kill it with a sword to find the skulls of its victims inside its stomach. There's also just a demon plank that flies out from the side of one of the streets. This thing can kill you, so get your sword ready to fend it off. You also find a glowing house where a priest and a husband go inside to find the haunted corpse of the wife who lives there. And the husband just rides her corpse around to subdue it, which was a pretty ridiculous moment. You may also run across a woman peering at you from behind a fence. Interacting with her will have a handmaiden deliver a poem to you. If you were diligent in your reference work, you'll know that this was a poem with the first line written by a poet, and the last line spoken to him by a demon. So obviously nothing good is going to come of this. After reading the poem, you can go in and speak to the woman, and she'll tell you to meet her at the Kawara Noin, the place that the girl from the marketplace led you. Nothing bad ever happens when you follow women there, right? Well, yeah, sad. She was such a good girl. You can also find a carriage somewhere in the streets that will take you back to the first district of the city. But you can also just walk back there by passing through the market district again. Anyway, the other major event that you'll want to find here is the man sleeping by one of the palace entrances in the northern part of the city. The palace is your main destination. You can steal his bow, arrows, and his bags. He'll wake up and blame the theft on a demon, and not the guy standing right in front of him holding all of his stuff. You, Yumi wa doko itta? O, this deals a negative hit to your karma, but if you didn't buy the bow and arrows from the weapon seller earlier, you're going to have to do this. At each of the palace gates, you'll find guards that won't let you through because you're dressed like a commoner. One of the front gates has a man who challenges you to a game of backgammon, but he's a filthy cheater because as I was about to win the match, he crashed the game, so screw that. Along one side of the palace walls, you'll find an opening you can slip through. There are several events inside, but you'll want to find the trees and follow the figure through them. This person will confront you and reveal themselves to be a demon. Using the sutra will ward them off and allow you to continue through the forest. And then this fox demon comes out and like pisses on you. I have no idea what the hell is happening here. <laughs> On the other side of the forest is the palace grounds, but to enter the palace itself, you'll need some new threads. So look for the demon chowing down on a fat nobleman. Banish the demon with the sutra and steal the clothes off the corpse. You can enter the palace now, and once you do, you're on the path to the endgame, and there's no turning back. 
Inside, you'll meet the Emperor, who talks about how great the capital city is and how the wards protected him from the terrible things that followed him from the old capital. Then he disappears. Exploring the throne room will make the demon Nue appear, which is basically a Japanese chimera. Here is where you need the bow. You'll have to time your shot to hit the Nue as it descends from the clouds. You only get three chances, and the timing is a little specific, so you might end up dying. Luckily if you do, you'll be reincarnated near the palace, and we'll just have to pick up your nobleman clothes and the rest of your items off your corpse there. You'll have the bow and arrows as well. Or you can just, you know, reload a save. Killing the Nue will cause a secret passage to open in the throne room, and following the path here will lead to a group of nobles discussing the fact that the capital hasn't had any rain lately. They notice your presence, and you get a chance to answer them when they question you on what you're doing here. It doesn't matter what you type, because they all get stomped on by a giant demon in a sequence that actually made me jump. What the fuck? Next, you'll find a hooded figure, and after speaking to him, you'll be caught in the collapse of the palace, and both be sent to hell. After a comically long time watching the demons beat on you with their spiked clubs, before I realize you can just click on the hooded figure to advance things, Nichijou will show up and lead the hooded figure out of hell. If you answer yes to his questions, he'll tell you to find the blue light and follow it back to the world of the living. If you say no, you'll have to watch all the torture scenes in Jigoku, but you'll still be able to follow the blue light out. Afterwards, you'll be reincarnated and find Nichijou chanting. With the ethereal track that plays in the background, along with the sentiment of Nichijou's speech, it makes for an actual touching conclusion to such a dark and unnerving game. And that's what's really striking about Cosmology of Kyoto. The combination of the historical and the supernatural, the cruelty of humanity and the goodness that exists in the majority of us, it's all juxtaposed inside this strange point-and-click adventure game. And though it may be confounding or gruesome at times, it's also brilliant and beautiful. Having seen it all and uncovered its mechanics and mysteries, I can say that it's actually not as open-ended or as indefinite as it would initially lead you to believe as you wander the dark streets, bumping into seemingly random, strange people and happenings. But it is something really special. For anyone with patience, who likes history, horror, Japanese culture, adventure games, or any of the above, it's worth checking out. It's a mind-boggling adventure with some shocking and horrific elements that's a one-of-a-kind experience. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. Also, leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and do that. I have a bunch of other videos you can watch. I also have a link to the Collection Chamber website where you can download this game in the description below. You can also find a link to my Twitter and a link to the Patreon. Check that out if you want to support the channel. And so, until next time, Cosmology of Kyoto. Check it out. Dungeon Chill. Out. <laughs> Dead, <laughs> <laughs>